Hello and good evening students and welcome back to Global Online Platform. This is Chandni Swanakar and today we are going to cover two important writers, Charles Lamb and John Clare. Of course, John Clare with uh, John Clare we are going to cover only two works and Charles Lamb we are going to maybe cover six works I guess. Okay, so let's start. You can get my lecture at 6 p.m. on a daily basis. Video mein aage badne se pehle mein aapko bada June 2024 mein jaya rakhlene ke liye smart provision karne ki zarurat hai. Iske liye Global Online aapko liye lekar aaya hai. English literature complete course. Isme aapko full syllabus video lectures milenge. Jisme short and smart ke saath aapke saare concept clear ho jayenge. Iske saath hi aapko full syllabus notes downloadable PDF format mein available karaya jayega. Jisse aap apne mobile laptop mein download ke easily par sakte ho. उसके साथ ही आपको मॉक टेस्ट मिलेंगे जिसे एज ए टेस्ट क्वेश्चन एग्जाम में पूछे जाते हैं मॉक टेस्ट आपके फाइनल प्रिपरेशन में बहुत हेल्प करता है तो गिवन कॉन्टैक्ट नंबर पर कॉन्टैक्ट करके आप इसे ज्वाइन कर सकते हो और सबसे अच्छी बात इस कोर्स की है दैट यू गोइंग टू गेट कंप्लीट पेपर वन कोर्स फॉर फ्री ओके ना फ्री वीडियोज़ के एक्सेस के लिए ग्लोबल ऑनलाइन आपको आप डाउनलोड कर सकते हो स्टोर सेशन पर जाओगे आपको सारे कोर्सेज की जानकारी यहाँ से मिल जाएगी सर्च बार में जा करके कोर्स का नाम लिखोगे तो कोर्स का ओवर भी आपके सामने आ जाएगा इसकी ड्यूरेशन इसकी फीस हर चीज़ जो है आपको मिल जाएगी उसके साथ ही अगर आप कंटेंट सेक्शन पे क्लिक करते हो तो आपको यूनिट वाइज जो है फोल्डर्स अवेलेबल मिलेंगे हर एक यूनिट में थियो लेक्चर्स वैल्यूशन नोट्स मॉक टेस्ट एंड एंड क्लियर आपको मिलेंगे इसके अलावा आपको कुछ भी पढ़ने की जरूरत नहीं है इसके साथ ही अगर आप ग्लोबल ऑनलाइन पेड कोर्स को ज्वाइन करते हो तो आपको व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप में भी ऐड किया जाएगा जहाँ पर हर एक सेशन की पी आप लोगों के साथ में प्रोवाइड करवाई जाएगी ओके सो फी आर इंटरेस्टेड यू कैन ज्वाइन नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट चार्ल्स लैम नाउ टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट चार्ल्स लैम ओके एंड वी आर आल्सो गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट जॉन क्लेर ओके सो चार्ल्स लैम इन पर्टिकुलरली वी आर गोइंग टू कवर टू वर्क्स Tales from Shakespeare and the one is of course Essays of Elia, which is very famous when it comes to Charles Lamb. And there, uh, there is another writer, John Clay. We are also going to cover some of the things related to him. Okay, so let's start with Charles Lamb. He was actually born in 1775, somewhere the French Revolution, 1778. Okay, and died in 1834. Okay, now. He is actually very famous for Essays of Elia, okay. And uh, you are also going to see her sister mentions, like his sister mentions Mary Lamb. Somewhere you are going to see that she actually wrote some of the works with Charles Lamb, okay. He is an English writer known for his Essays of Elia and Tales from Shakespeare, written with his sister Mary Lamb, as I have told you. And he was also um, had. Famous or popular friends like Samuel Taylor Coleridge, Robert Southey, and William Wordsworth. Of course, they are very famous. We cannot uh, even think of Romantic Age without them, right? Now, Lamb was a part of a prominent literary group in England. So. He was also a part of lit, uh, a prominent literary group in England. His biographer E. V. Lucas called him the most lovable figure in English literature. So, uh, can I ask you, do you love Charles Lamb? Basically, his biographer E. V. Lucas uh, said this: the most lovable figure in English literature. So he said it. You can also um, disagree with him, but. you do need to remember this now basically in some people's lives uh, you can see that uh, religion or faith plays a very significant role so charles lamb is one of them he was religiously very active uh, he was into christianity and uh, you can see the beliefs the uh, uh, tradition culture uh, in his works okay now he found comfort in religion uh, he mentioned that while writing letter to samuel taylor coleridge and bernard bot and that is how we got to know okay now he was also very much inspired or uh, um uh, got faith in new testament as his primary life guide right? some times we uh, see people uh, in india especially Uh, Bhagavad Gita is the life source or the primary life guide uh, I follow. So that is how there is a person Charles Lamb who is actually following or regarding the New Testament as his primary life guide. He was also into Zams like he used to write uh, not write read Zams 
for extended periods without feeling fatigued. He actually claimed that that he never felt tired while reading Lamps. Okay, even for extended periods for a long time, Lamps work stays alive mainly through university English departments. Of course, so uh, his works maybe uh, we might have lose, but uh, because of university English department, we can uh, read his works. Now, let me tell you a pub in. Islington called the Charles Lamb honors him. So, uh, for honoring uh, Charles Lamb, there is a pub in Islington. Okay, and there is also something that somebody said. Let me tell you. And Pediman regrets that Lamb isn't widely read today, saying, "I do not understand why so few other readers are clamoring for his company." Okay, so who said this? And Pediman. Um, you can also see some of the influences and uh, mention. Sir Edward Elgar composed Dream Children inspired by Charles Lamb's essay of the same name. So he also got inspired and wrote uh, essay. Now Harper Lee's novel To Kill a Mockingbird. It's a very famous work. I hope you must have heard about it. Now begins with Lamb's quote: "Lawyers, I suppose, were children once." So there is a quote. Okay, then the Lambs Club, founded by Henry James Montag, is named after Charles and Mary Lambs Salon. So uh, just imagine how the person is important, how much the person is important there. Yeah? Charles Lamb is a significant character in the uh, Gunshi Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. I'm really sorry for this because uh, it's a very weird name, but okay. This is funny. Potato Peel Pie Society by Mary Ann Sheffer and Annie Beros. This is not a very important point, but uh, you can read this other uh, points. Okay, so do remember the other points. Now let's cover the first work of Charles Lamb, of course, Essays of Failure. So it was uh, published in 1823. It's a collection of essays, as I have already told you, I think. Now it was published in 1823, but with the second edition, the second volume also came. Called it is called Last Essays of Failure. The first essay was the collection Essays of Failure in 1823. Then the second volume came and it is called Last Essays of Failure, released in 1833. Okay, so do remember this this difference, this verification. Now the essays were initially published in the London Magazine from 1820 to 1825 and were very popular. Even now, a days we read it. Now. Uh, a thing that you need to remember the pseudonym is there so in this particular work he actually used a pseudonym uh, Elia Charles Lamb using the pseudonym Elia wrote the essays with his sister Mary referred to as cousin Bridget okay so do remember this um, and some of the names of the collection essays names in the collection do remember and if you have time you can also read this the south sea house you can read the green children semicolon and reverie you can read and you can also read the praise of chimney swippers okay so if you have time do read this then also the second one christ hospital five and thirty years ago okay now before that before finishing this particular work let me read it for you the South Sea House, the first, second, there are a lot more, like 20 in total, okay, in this collection. 20 essays. Christ Hospital, 5 and 30 years ago. Third, New Year's Eve. Fourth, Dream Children, a Reverie. Fifth, Praise of Chimney Swippers. Sixth, The Toms in the Abbey. Seventh, The Old and the New Schoolmaster. And eighth, Old Fool's Day. All Fool's Day. Okay, now the second work. Tales from Shakespeare, what is happening here, okay, so Tales from Shakespeare, why it is called Tales from Shakespeare, basically, uh, with Mary Lamb, he actually wrote books of Shakespeare, okay, for, especially for children, because uh, I can read a novel, you can read a novel, but children cannot understand the heavy uh, dictionary or uh, diction, right, the dictionary I was, I was telling, okay, never mind, so diction is heavy, right, very um, smart and uh, very difficult diction are there in our novels like uh, 230 pages how can a children read those words so basically Charles Lamb what uh, he did he and his sister 
what they did uh, they actually uh, somewhere managed those stories to uh, edit or uh, add little or easy diction for children okay so it's like a revised work uh, by just skipping and uh, editing something and just paraphrasing it okay so it's meant for young readers but still keeps a lot of the original shakespeare language so it also keeps that the originality kept mary lamb wrote about the funny stories so do remember this because mary lamb wrote the funny stories the comedies okay charles and wrote about uh, the sad stories so tragedies he wrote mary lamb wrote the funny ones they didn't include the harder stories about history like the ones about rome because children will not get to uh, will get it okay now they changed the stories a bit to make them easier for kids but they don't didn't take out anything important so as i have mentioned this they worked on the introduction together so uh, for comedies or uh, tragedies they divided themselves uh, and they worked on the introduction together so this is the full information now the book contains the following tales uh, by charles lamb i'm not mentioning the mary lamb's work okay so king lear macbeth timon of athens romeo and juliet hamlet comma prince of denmark i don't need to read this <laughs> i'm still doing it now the sixth work is othello okay so these are the works sixth work six work in total by charles lamb very great person now let's cover the second writer without further uh ado okay so john clare john clare was born in 1793 and died in 1864 you don't need to remember this okay let me clear that out now he is actually famous for um, have you ever seen somebody who is actually uh, romanticized um countryside or rural side they are very much into rural side they can see the beauty of it so john clare is one of them okay so known for celebrating english countryside wrote about sorrows from disruption of nature so there is there is a lot to say about nature if you are reading romantic writers you are going to see that reevaluated in late 20th century now considered a major 19th century poet okay so that is why we are reading it now biographer jonathan bate hailed him as the greatest laboring class poet in england so jonathan bate something said something hailed him as the greatest laboring class poet in england okay so that much he was working hard for laboring class now famous for powerful writings on nature rural childhood and personal struggles so these are the themes that he covered in his works okay so let's start with the works the first i think uh, we are going to cover the two works okay so let's cover the first work the lament of swardy well wait a minute the lament of swardy well it is of course written by john clare in the 1830s so it actually personifies something so what it personifies it personifies an old limestone quarry you can and it, you can also search this old limestone quarry it's like um, it's like stones okay and his it's kind of a, a flower kind of thing pink pink um, you can search you can search that would be easy for you now near clare's home in hepson northern shire why it is so difficult to read this words i will try my level best okay now uses the voice of the quarry and has to express despair and describes hardship faced by the poor and changes in the land due to enclosure by the local peris one of clare's most well known protest poems okay so because of this things how uh, Uh, poor people face is challenges in her lives in their lives basically so this is the whole thing about that the challenges of poor, poor people and uh, i think there is not a lot to say about this work but uh, for now you just need to remember this particular title and do remember 
some of the details as I have mentioned. Okay, so now the second work is the pool colon scenes of bread and laugh. The pool. Why it is? It seems like an allegory or sarcasm kind of thing. Now it is not written by John Clare. Let me tell you, it is written by a uh, playwright Edward Bond. I hope you must have heard King Lear, right? Now it focuses on the life of poet John Clare. That is why we are reading. It's a kind of a biography thing. Now set against the backdrop of the Industrial Revolution, and it actually traces uh, Clare's journey from rural East Anglia to literary success in London. So how he got success and uh, how. Um, the life was of Clare's in rural East Anglia, and then how he became very famous uh, in London. Okay, so he it actually covers his final years in a lunatic asylum. So you are also going to see that John Clare also went to the to a lunatic asylum. Okay, so this is a kind of a biography. You can. Um, See here that is why we have covered now um, we have covered today's lecture we'll meet in the next lecture thank you very much this is it for today all the very best